In today's society, as women, we have this I can do it all mentality. And with life being so fast paced and us often having to step into that masculine role, especially within our work and our careers, we tend to lose touch with our feminine energy, our core energy. And what this does is it leads to stress, it leads to anxiety, it leads to all kinds of health issues and unhappiness. But in understanding the nature of our feminine energy and adopting practices that help its healing and its nourishment, we can experience a greater sense of well-being and fulfillment. So I wanna talk about first the importance of feminine energy as well as its healing power and how you can integrate it into your daily life. So feminine energy is a super powerful force and it exists in every single human being regardless of our gender, however, the majority of women have a more cord feminine energy. It's a nurturing and creative and intuitive and receptive energy that allows us to connect with our inner wisdom and our higher selves. Feminine energy helps us to be more compassionate and empathetic and understanding towards others on top of allowing us to manifest everything that we want into our lives. When we can connect to that energy, to that core feminine, creative and intuitive energy, we can bring into our lives everything that we desire. You know, when we are disconnected from our feminine energy, we can experience disorientation or anger or sadness or, you know, it looks different on a lot of people. For me, it happened to come out in anger and in burnout, you know? And I think a lot of us women can experience that in today's like crazy fast paced world that let's be honest, is built for men and is built for the male cycle of that 24 hours where ours is, is a 28 day cycle, right? And so we have stepped into this role of playing the masculine and in that we lose our feminine. This can also show up as, you know, mood swings, low libido, fatigue, depression, digestive issues, headaches, which I am no stranger to. But when you embrace your feminine energy, right? and you let it flow freely, you'll experience a much greater sense of joy and peace and happiness and vitality in your life. So how do we heal this feminine energy? What are some practices that we can realistically implement to harness and, and bring ourselves back into our core feminine energy. The first one I wanna talk about, and I feel like it's thrown around a lot today, but it looks different for every single person, and that is self-care. You know, making time every single day, whether it's five minutes or five hours, to care for yourself is essential to bringing us back to our feminine and to flourish in the most authentic way that we possibly can. You know, this th there's such an array of things that you can do, but you can dance, you can journal, you can cook, you can meditate, you can go on a walk in nature, you can take a bath, you can go get a massage or get your nails done or get your hair done. There are just so many things that you can do when you feel disconnected to your feminine to kind of scoot you back into your feminine. And you just have to figure out like what that is for you. Maybe for someone, it's sitting in the mirror and practicing new makeup techniques, right? And for someone else, it could be swimming, you know, in a lake or a pool or something that helps, that makes you feel connected to nature. You know, maybe you love to cook or to bake and getting into that flow in the kitchen is something that just makes you feel good and nourished. So you just have to kind of find what works for you and understand that what might work for me or someone else might not work for you and vice versa. You know, if you love to write and journal, do that. But if that makes you feel stressed, then don't. And if you wanna learn more about journaling, I'll post this video right here where I can explain different techniques and ways that you can journal if that's something you're interested in doing. This second one is so important because in our society, we are constantly told to get a hold of our emotions, 
okay? And stop being so emotional and all of these things. But to be in your feminine, you have to embrace those emotions. And that was something that I struggled with for a long time. And when I started embracing those emotions instead of trying to run away from them or getting angry that I was having them, they were actually much easier to manage and to understand and to, to learn from. You know, emotions are a natural part of the human experience. It's, it's, why, it's why we came here. So, so why would we try to fight them, right? Why would we try to run away from them when it's something that we, we came here to experience? You know, as long as that we can acknowledge them and express them in healthy and productive ways, there's nothing wrong with being emotional, right? I've actually fallen in love with the fact that I'm an emotional being, where I used to just detest it. I was like disgusted with myself because I was so emotional, when now I love that about myself, but it took me <laughs> years to get here. You know, allowing yourself to to process and to feel your emotions, whether they're positive or negative, and expressing them through creative sources, whether that's drawing or writing or singing or dancing or whatever it may be, is such, is such a powerful tool. If you take anything from this video, please do not belittle yourself because you have emotions. Next, and I also think, well, I mean, these are all so important. I don't even know which one's the most important one, but number three is connecting with other women. If you're a woman watching this, think about a time when you were just surrounded by maybe the women in your family or a bunch of your female friends and, and put yourself back in that place and feel that energy and that connectiveness. Right, like I, like ah, oh, it's just such a powerful thing to connect with other women and be surrounded by other women. I mean, back in the day, that's what they did, right? Women were a community. The men were all out hunting and doing all their thing, and the women all came together. They always say it takes a village. Yeah, a village and a community of women. It is such a a powerful way to heal our feminine energy, to just be around other women. Like I know that every time I come back from like a weekend or time spent with a bunch of my girlfriends, I feel so refreshed and like almost like a like buzzy feeling, like just high energy and just feeling like, ah, oh, it's just so good, right? And that's not because there's anything wrong with men. There's, there's, I'm, I am not a man hater. I love men. I think there are so many wonderful men out there, but there is just something so different and powerful with being in that feminine energy and just being, you know, washed over by it. If you don't have a lot of like female friends or not in your area, you can attend women's groups in your area or retreats or maybe even like there's like some Facebook groups out there or something like that where you can just, you know, connect with the women in your life and find new women to connect with that you can just really flourish in. This next one is something that I feel like probably 90% of women struggle with and that is setting healthy boundaries. Okay, and I don't mean just with other people, but with yourself as well and, and protecting your energy. You know, learn to, to say no to things that drain you and exhaust you and, and make you just feel ugh. And learn to say yes to things that nourish you and make you feel good and uplifted and positive. You know, set boundaries around your time, around your energy, around emotion. For example, I've learned that there's a certain time in my own cycle where I don't wanna do anything. I don't wanna be around other people. Even if I love them to pieces, I just need my alone time. And that was something that I ignored for so many years, right? So you have to kind of learn those things about yourself and acknowledge them and feed them right and setting boundaries is feeding those parts of us i mentioned earlier in this video that a big part of feminine energy is our intuition if you think about it women birth new human beings we are the portal from the spiritual realm into this earthly realm 
okay? And when we have this heightened sense of intuition and, and listening to our gut, it drives our life in a way that nothing else can. You know, our intuition, and men have it too, right? But as a whole, women's intuition is much stronger than men's. And so when we learn to listen to that intuition and not push it to the side, ignore it, or question it, it will just magnetize our feminine energy. I suggest to make some time each day, even if it's five or 10 minutes. That's some days, hours, other days, five minutes. Make that time to connect to your intuition and to your inner wisdom. Things that can help you with this is journaling, is meditation, is doing certain breathing exercises, right? And just bring yourself back into your body and feeling your body and tuning into its signals. You know, what is your body telling you? You know the answer. If you want help with learning more about intuition, I'll stick this video right here for you to check out. It is such a, oh, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. <laughs> Stop ignoring your intuition. It's there for a reason. And the last practical step I wanna talk about, again, is something that is talked about a lot, but I feel like a lot of us don't actually understand how it works and how to do it, and that is self-love. Self-love is not only self-care, you know, in which we talked about in the first step, right? Self-love is so, it's so much deeper than that. It's self-compassion and acceptance and forgiveness. It's not being angry at yourself when you feel that you've done something wrong or messed something up or you don't need to feel disappointed in yourself. Sometimes the way I like to look at this is think of like your your best friend or your mom or your sister or someone, another woman that you're very close with, right? And if they came to you and told you X, Y, Z problem or something that they're angry at themselves about or upset with themselves about, how would you respond to them? Because it's so ironic that we're so much kinder and more compassionate with the people that we care about, way more than we are with ourselves. And if we can just turn around and aim that self-love and compassion and forgiveness towards ourselves, we can greatly heal our feminine energy and our love for ourselves. You know, we have so much love to give everyone else, okay? But it is time to love yourself and to care about yourself and to cherish who you are and heal that relationship with yourself. Everyone else is gonna be just fine, okay? Love yourself, respect yourself, guide yourself, be your own best friend. I would really love to hear which one of these steps you're going to implement first and you know what you enjoyed about this video because I'm so passionate about feminine energy and, and healing it because I lost it for so long. And I know so many women out there can relate to that. So if you found value in this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe so we can hang out again next week. I love you guys so, so, so much. And don't forget, be limitlessly yourself. Thank you.